Hello. Recently, I've gone a little crazy with the eyeshadow purchases. Like, the last few months have had a lot of packages coming to my door. And I know you guys have been asking about specific brands that I've been trying and what my thoughts are. So I figured today I would compile all of the brands that I've tried and do a, like, first impressions haul. Some of these I've had longer than others to test, but all of them I've worn at least a few of the shades on the eyes, and I feel ready to do a collective first impressions. Keep in mind, I haven't tested every single shadow here, but I will be coming back once I have to do like a brand overview like I have with brands I have had longer to get to know. But if you want to see my first impressions of brands including Pastel Roses UK, Burnovich, MBA Cosmetics, Kristen Lee Cosmetics, Nomad Updated, and uh, one little one-off shadow, and then go ahead and just keep on watching and subscribe. The first brand up is Pastel Roses UK, and this is the brand I've had the longest to test out. I've had this haul for about two months at this point so i've had quite a bit of time to get used to these shadows not enough to do a brand overview quite yet but i thought i could at least show you all of the goodies i got the two i have swatched on my fingers right now are some of the lowest priced eyeshadows on the pastel roses uk's website so first up on my index finger we have the shade classic and then on my middle finger, we have the shade Glamour. These are both very sparkly. This first one, Classic, is a really interesting shade. It's kind of a silvery taupe, but there's something about it that almost is a little bit green-ish to me. Something to note, though, right off the bat, is that the Pastel Roses UK swatches on the website might be some of the worst brand photography I've ever seen. It's really hard to tell what you're going to get some of the times depending on the swatch photos. The second shade, Glamour, is kind of a silvery leaning purple. So we've got silvery leaning green and then silvery leaning purple. You can see very different when swatched out, but both have that kind of silver essence to them. Not really any shift happening in either of these shades, but they are very sparkly and overall with all of the shades that i've worn including these two i found that pastel roses wears well doesn't get a ton of fallout but i have had a few people tell me that their pastel roses shades started to smell a little funky after like six months to a year of owning them so that is something i am kind of like keeping an eye out for or i guess keeping a nose out for next we've got the shade very peri if i remember correctly this is listed as a duochrome on their site so price wise it's a little bit more expensive but not one of the most expensive shades it's got a very pale what i would say is like lilac base with a gold sheen on top but that pale is really light and pastel so I don't know how great this would look on folks with deeper skin tones, but on me, I love this type of light purple to gold shadow. Next up is the shade Unicorn, and this is pretty much an exact dupe for the Luxy shade Ube. I kind of had a sneaking suspicion in my head that it would be when I ordered it, but I thought it'd be maybe a helpful comparison for people, especially those who are living in the UK or the EU who might not be able to access Luxy. So can confirm, it's got a light purple base with like a tealy green shift that then goes to a pink, which I don't think I'm gonna be able to capture, but it is a dupe. Next is the shade Midnight Rose, and this one is beautiful. Again, it's got a really pale purple base, this time leaning a little bit cooler with that purple base. Almost looks kind of gray here when the light isn't hitting it. 
Then on top, it's got a blue sparkle that shifts to a pretty bright purpley pink color. And it is really sparkly. I'm not sure if you can tell, but sparkle wise, I would say this is the most sparkly, followed by these two, followed by this one. And then lastly, this one, this unicorn shade just has a really fine shimmer throughout whereas this has more of a small to medium particle size this next shade is skyfall it's really interesting it's got a purpley base again kind of looks a little grayed out here but there is definitely something purple about this shade but then on top it's got that really vibrant green sparkle that shifts even more to a purple when not in, you know, direct light like this. And something interesting to point out, both of these shades I don't have any dupes for in my collection. Skyfall in particular is a very unique shade for me, and I don't have it to confirm this, but it does kind of remind me of the Terra Moon's Bellatrix shade in some ways, although this one is a lot less expensive than that Terra Moon shade. Last up in this first row, we have a shade called Butterfly that came for free with my order. So this one has a pretty like blue base, just kind of a standard blue in my opinion. And then on top, you can see it's got that pinky purple sparkle that then shifts to a gold. This reminds me of the shade Calypso from Terra Moons, which again, I don't own, but I think they're going to be pretty similar. Next up is the shade Moon. This is one of the more expensive ones. I think this is like at like a $9 price point, and it's not what I expected it to be in some ways. It just is a lot finer of a shimmer. It almost looks like a metallic, way more so than I thought it would be. And you can see on first swatch, it's like opaque, but there's something kind of like light about it. I'm not really sure how to explain it. It's an interesting one for sure. Again, one that I don't really have anything quite like in my very expansive collection at this point. These two are pretty similar. I would say this one leans more like tealy green in the base and then it goes more to a like green kind of sparkle rather than the gold that butterfly goes to next we've got the shade fairy and this is one i was really excited for it's such a kind of interesting one it does have something in essence similar to something like jd glow prismatic but i find that this one is a lot lighter than any of my other ones that I have like this. It's got that kind of yellowy green base with a blue sparkle on top that goes to a pretty strong purpley pink, very similar to like these two colors on top of it. Really pretty and I am really excited to wear this next spring, but I have been enjoying it a lot in the summer too. This is the shade Pixie. And I said in my Quicksand Cosmetics video that I thought that this was going to be a dupe for one of their shades, and it definitely is. It is, like, exactly the same. More of a satiny finish, highlighter yellow base with a pink shift that goes to more of a gold and orange. Uh, really pretty much less expensive than the Quicksand Cosmetics version, especially if you are in the EU or UK. You can see though, my fingers have been staining a bit from some of these shades, but I find that they wash off pretty easily on like my eyes and arms. I haven't had any terrible staining, but there definitely is staining on my fingers right now. Next, we've got the shade Lucky Charm. This is a multi-chrome, so I think they're normally priced at like, I don't know, like $16, but they are on sale quite a bit, and I was able to stack a coupon code on top of the sale that I bought from, so this one ended up being like $10, so pretty good deal for a multi-chrome. It is a dupe shade for Davina Fairy Fire, Copacetic Fiesta, which is the version I own, and a ton of others. Very pretty. It's got a mustard yellow sheer base with a really strong green sparkle on top that then shifts to like a blue and a purple, which I'll try to show some of the shifts with the mirror here after we've got a full arm of swatches. 
This is one of the marbled shades, Botanique, I think is how you say it. It uh, is very, very fragile, and so this one and this one down here, which I'll talk about in a bit, I've found to be pretty crumbly. This Botanique shade, it's got marbles of like green and pink and gold, but once it's all swatched out, it is basically just kind of a sparkly gold shade, and I find it to be a little less impactful than some of the others but it can be built up a bit. This next shade really surprised me. I was like, oh, this looks like a shade I own a thousand times over, but I decided to pick it up and it is so unique. This is the shade Sunlight and it's kind of a perfect blend of like green and pink sparkles over a sheer like kind of tannish base. Look at that. It is so beautiful. It's one of those like spicy neutrals that you can get away with wearing to work if you work in an office setting, but there is something really special about it and you really can see those like green and pink sparkles throughout. One of my favorites. This next one also really impressed me. This is the shade Love Story and it's a peach that has a pink shift on top that then goes to a pretty strong like gold and green. It kind of reminds me of the shade Watermelon Sorbet that I have from Touch of Glam in the shift. But you can see it also is a little less sparkly and more of like a traditional shimmer than some of these others. I've only got a few Pastel Roses shades left, so I want to throw them on the other arms so that way you can see all of them at once. This shade is called Dreamer. It's got essentially a black base that has a shift of like a peachy red to orange to gold to green. Very multi-chromatic in my opinion, but it's not priced as a multi-chrome. It also really reminds me of the shade Harvest from Shine by SD. This one is called Love Letter and it's got a tan orangish kind of base color on there. You can see a little bit deeper and then it's got a pink to gold sparkle on top. And this reminds me of a lot of different shades like Tucana from Divina, although this one is deeper. And it's not quite as special as I thought it was going to be in person. I will say both of these have a very dry texture and they kind of can be a little patchy depending on how you apply them. I find that all of the shades from Pastel Roses seem to be a little on the dry side, more like a Shine by SD formula than a Terra Moons formula. But these two in particular are pretty dang dry. This next shade is Cutie, and even though it looks pretty pink in the pan, I find that it's got pretty much an iridescent base on it. It's pretty transparent. And then this pink sparkle goes to a little bit of a gold in some harsh lighting, but mostly you're getting that pink. Then to wrap up, we've got two iridescent shades. First up is the shade Taurus, which is an exact dupe color wise for Divina Zira, which I was a little salty about once I realized because I did not think that's what it was based on the images. And then we have one of their regular iridescent shades called Vision. This one doesn't shift at all and it's kind of just got that green sparkle on top, which is really nice. I actually don't have anything that is just a green, so I really like that. And this one ended up being like with all the discounts and stuff like four dollars so it's a pretty good price the multi-chrome ended up being about 10 with my discounts and you can see it's got that orange shimmer on top and then it also shifts to a green and then here is vision which you can see is just a green and i like them both this one is a little bit more sparkly than the multi-chrome shade but they both are really nice and i find that they have worn well on the inner corner here are all of those shades together, so I'll go break out the mirror and see if we can catch any shifts, which you all know I struggle with showing, so I'll try my best. First of all, don't judge how dirty my mirror is, but I think that for this hand, this is going to be the best that I can do to show you. You aren't quite getting to that green 
on the shade Taurus, but you are seeing that gold that the orange goes into. And then just imagine it goes into a green on the sides. Same thing with the top two. You aren't really getting that green on the top or a strong gold on the second one, but they are there. On this side, again, you can see kind of some shifts, but nothing quite as strong as it is in person. I feel like if anything, you can see the shift in Midnight Rose pretty well, which is the fifth shade down from my wrist. And I feel like you can also see a little bit of that blue in Lucky Charm, but you aren't seeing any of the purple. And I really just don't know how to show shifts, guys. I'm so sorry. See what I mean though about how my arms are able to wash off without really any discernible staining? I do wear eye primer when I put on eyeshadow, and so that might affect whether something stains or not. But like I said, I haven't had any staining with these shades when I've worn them. Overall though, I've been really pleased with my Pastel Roses shades. There are no duds, which is great. And I feel like they have an actually pretty competitive price point, but I am a little hesitant to say I love them like 100% because I am on the hunt for a smell. Next up, we've got Burnovich, and this is the order that has come to me most recently. So you can kind of expect that I'm going to have the least of an opinion on these shades. What I can tell you is that they are Sparkle City. So this first one is the shade X31. It did say in the description it was a pure silver, but in the pictures it didn't look like a pure silver. In real life, it is definitely a pure silver, and it feels a little gritty, but I didn't see anything that said it had glitter in it, and it is labeled as a sparkle formula, which some of the others are. This is the one that feels the grittiest, but you guys, look at that freaking disco ball on my arm right now. It is insanely sparkly. Next, we've got one called C120, and this is what is called their creative formula to me it seems like kind of just a standard kind of like shimmer satin kind of formula it's a little bit softer feeling and this one is an interesting color i honestly don't know how to describe it it's almost like a very light blue with a green sheen it's a really interesting one but you can definitely see the difference in those formulas I also should note that this is a Polish brand, so this might be a good option for my EU friends. Now we've got another Sparkle formula, but again, this one a lot smoother and less like PC than that other Sparkle formula. This is the shade X19, I wanna say. Yeah, X19, and it has a purple base, although in practice it's a lot sheerer than it looks like it's going to be in the pan. And then on top of it, it's got kind of a gold, green, blue sparkle. And there is a little bit of a shift, but mostly you're seeing those sparkle particles intermixed with each other. Now we've got another C147 shade. So this is a creative shade, AKA their like normal, typical formula. This one's really interesting. It's got like an indigo, base with a gold shift on top really interesting combination and it does look like a smoky purple in person it's not too too blue so that's one i'm very excited to put on the eyes i haven't worn that one yet this one is another sparkle formula this is x47 and this one is pretty sheer pretty much transparent in the base with a purpley pink and blue and a little bit silver sparkle. No shifting in this one, but again, just a lot of different colored sparkle particles. Next up, we've got X44, and this is like the closest I've come to finding a dupe for Luxie Angel Wings. It's not quite the same. I feel like this one is even more gold than Angel Wings is, and then the base color is a little bit lighter than Angel Wings, but it is kind of like a neutral adjacent kind of shade. It's got that peachy base color with the gold sparkle that then shifts to a teal and then a blue as well. And then the last one is X06. 
This one has much more of a bronze base, but other than that, they are pretty dang similar. Like you can see that difference in the base color there, but the sparkle on top is similar and the shifts are like identical. So did I need both of these? Probably not, but here we are. And those are all of the shades that I picked up from Burnovich. They are very beautiful. I have only worn this one on the eyes so far and it wore well, but I mean, I don't feel like I can speak overall yet on the wear time or anything like that. But based on sparkles alone, I am very impressed. And it's a competitive price point. Like, I got a 25% off discount, which is why I made a purchase. But even without that, if I remember correctly, they're like 7 euros. So not like terrible. And then these ones that are like the lesser formula or more standard formula are even cheaper. I should mention, I did pick up two mattes from Brnovich too. This first one is the shade Rainbow R02. It's like they're more colorful mattes. And then the second one is Matte M33. That one is considered more of like a neutral tone. And they're nice. I actually have used the blue on the eyes already and they have a very smooth feeling to them. They build well, they blend well. I've been happy with the mattes so far. Sorry, I kept the mattes in a different palette. This last lone shadow over here is the beginning of my NBA Cosmetics order. This is the shade Glowtastic. It is a very pale purple, like same type of pale purple as Very Perry, although this one is warmer. And then you can see on top, it's got a pink sheen. I wouldn't necessarily call it a sparkle. It is honestly more like a metallic finish, but this is a multi-chrome. So then it goes to a gold, a green, and a little bit blue. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to capture it for you though. This next shade is called Don't Make Me Flip My Witch Switch, which is quite a mouthful, but this one's got a gray base with a purple Again, more of like a metallic sheen on top, less discernible sparkle on these shades from NBA, but it also does sh shift to a pink and then a little bit like peachy gold as well. This one is at that $8 duochrome price point though, compared to this one, which is at a multi-chrome price point. I believe initially it was maybe $14 or $15, but again, I've been shopping summer sales here, there, everywhere, so I don't have the actual prices in my head. And oh, look, you can kind of see the gold, at least, there on that multi-chrome shade. Next, we've got the shade Basic Witch, which uh, is pretty similar to Looksy Big Bang that came out this spring. And shout out to my follower who... Uh, mentioned that to me and like asked me to compare those two. This one is a little less gold in the base compared to Big Bang, but they are pretty dang close. And uh, if you want to be shouted out by name, you know, I don't want to assume that of you, but I'll link you down in the description if you want me to. The next shade is Son of a Witch. And if you can't tell yet, this is from like a spooky Halloween collection, this group of shades I've just swatched. This one again has more of a gray base but it's got a blue sparkle that then goes a little bit purple. And you can see the gray bases are similar, but this one's a little bit deeper. This next one is Glowly But Surely, and I have used this one, this one, this one, this one on the eyes. Oh, and I think this one too. But this one, uh, it's a little bit like almost like powdery in some ways. It also is really sheer. You aren't getting that bright green base like you would think looking at the pan. It does shift to a purple, and I have found that this one in particular has gotten a little bit of hard pan already, so I'm not sure if it's something about like that almost neon pigment that makes it a little bit harder, but something about it definitely is a little bit different. This next shade is Poison Apple. This is also considered a multi-chrome, but it's listed at a lot lower of a price point. So this one has that green base, and honestly, I'm not quite sure how to describe this color of green. It's more cool-toned, but 
something about it is kind of olivey in a way to me. I'm, I really don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like dusty almost. But then you can see it's got that pink shift. And then you can kind of see it shifts to a gold as well. This one almost has like a satin kind of feel. Like it is not very sparkly. None of them really are. But they do have good shifts. And I know that there are some people who prefer a more like finely milled kind of formula and not something like super you know textured and sparkly like this Brnovich shade so if that's you this might be a brand that you would really like this next shade is here for the booze and again we've got a gray base with a kind of olivey gold shimmer on top that then shifts to a little bit more of a true green but the shift on this one isn't super hardcore and it's a really interesting combination, this like gray to gold. So this is one I've been really enjoying. Next, we've got the shade Oopsie Daisy. This is from like one of their more recent collections. This has a pale yellow base with a green to pink shimmer on top. It's really pretty and it does have a pretty good shift on it. Honestly, I thought it was interesting that this one looks a little bit more like neon green than this glowly but surely shade. So if you were wondering between the two, they both do shift to like a purpley pink. And so honestly, I might just say go with the Oopsie Daisy shade because it's less expensive and looks pretty much just as green. Uh, it does have a little bit more sparkle too. This shade came for free with my order. This is the shade Venus Tea Garden. It's not one I would have picked up because I have a lot of dupes for it, but it is a really beautiful shade and it's definitely the most sparkly out of like anything that I have from MBA. I feel like you can even see in the footage that it just is more sparkly. So this is one of those shades that's got like a reddish base with a golden kind of sparkle that then shifts to more of a green. So I got that shade for free and I also got this like little palette for free. It's like a little 12 pan empty magnetic palette. No message or anything in the package so I assume they like meant to give them to me but there wasn't anything like saying like you got a free thing or anything like that. Uh, the last shade I got is one of their like silk fx shades so these ones are like the cheapest formula and it's basically just a metallic it's called fet champagne i was looking at amber's indie makeup like instagram to help me decide what shades to pick up and she said that this was one of the most sparkly shades from that like lowest tier price point and to me I don't really see a ton of sparkle in this. I definitely see more of like a metallicness coming from this. There is like a little bit of shimmer, but I don't necessarily think it's like super sparkly, which to me says if this is like one of the most sparkly, that is probably just like not a super sparkly formula overall. Wear time with these has been good. I found that I wore Basic Witch to work one day. I had it on for like six hours before I noticed any creasing. At that point, it was like pretty fine creasing and I was able to pat it out. It took a little bit more work since it's a little bit drier of a formula, but it did pat out just fine. I am pretty happy with this order. I feel like all of the shades that I got are actually pretty unique. So that is a cool thing. And I MBA is like one of those brands that I've considered buying from for a long time. But something about their swatch photos and their website, I was like, I don't know, like, is it going to be good? And I had a follower, again, let me know if you want to be shouted out in this video. I don't want to like, you know, shout you out unless you want to. But I was talking with someone, one of my friends on Instagram, and she like really likes MBA Cosmetics, which is what pushed me over the edge and I am happy I've tried them out. They are nice. It's a very different formula than most of the other indie brands, a lot smoother. But if you're into that, especially, I think that everything I got has been good quality. Next, we've got Dandelions Co. And I did pick up some mattes, but I only have the shimmers here. It's these five. This first one I believe is called Fake Snow. Yes, this is Fake Snow. And this shade is so pretty. I I am like, oh my god. Okay, so it's basically a white, but then there's like these little golden flecks, and it is so sparkly, and it's like a fine sparkle. There's no shift or anything, 
but it just is really beautiful to me. I, I really like this formula from Dandelions, but they're not all made equal. This next shade is Spoiled Brat, and this one, again, beautiful. Like, the sparkle in here is really nice. Uh, this one has a little bit of, like, a more, like, traditional shimmer underneath, but then it's got this golden sparkle on top. And again, really, really beautiful. Next, we've got the shade, I think this is called Princess. Let me double check. Yes, this is Princess. And I thought it was going to be that same sparkly formula based on the pictures. It's not. It's basically like a satin. It's got a pale kind of pink with like a bluish kind of shift on top. And this one, it's kind of nice for like a one and done look and like a really casual kind of look. It kind of reminds me in some ways of like some of the shades from like Charlotte Tilbury or something like that, but it definitely is not sparkly. So, I mean, we very clearly have two different types of formulas here and this top formula is the one that I prefer. Next, we've got what is considered a multi-chrome. This is the shade Bruxa and it's got a dark like slate blue kind of base. It's pretty gray, but not 100% gray. And then on top, again, we've got kind of that like satiny finish. You guys can see a blue, but then it does shift to a purple and a little bit gold. I feel like you can kind of see that purple shift over here though. We have our last shimmer shade from Dandelions. This is the shade Aventurine. And this one, it's okay. It's not great. It's got like a grayish, again, kind of like something dusty base, and then a green sparkle on top. This one is kind of a blend between the two formulas. It's a little bit more sparkly than these other two, but it's like nothing to write home about. And so if you can find ones that are like this sparkly formula from Dandelions Co. for $4.50, I think those are really nice shades. And even like the satiny ones are nice, but they just are a very different type of formula. Now we've got some matte shades, and I want to point out Hot Vegan Hannah did a video with an eye look, you know, trying out the Dandelion Co. matte shades, and she found them to be really powdery, and they totally are. The way that I have found to use these the best is to uh, pick them up on a brush and kind of like place them where you want and then start to blend them out. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. But first up, this is the shade Polywog, and then we've got Wisteria Wisps. So you can see Polywog, a pretty true sky blue, and then Wisteria Wisps is more of a periwinkle or leaning cornflower blue. And this is gonna be a terrible example because this is the back of my hand, not my eye. But how I will normally use these shadows is I'll pick them up and you can see lots of kick up in the pan. Then on my eye, I kind of will pat them down. And keep in mind, I don't have any eye primer on or anything on the back of my hand right now. So I'll pat them down and then start kind of blending wherever I want to blend on top of it. But that's the way I find to get the best color payoff and I'll slowly just like pat it, build it, stuff like that. I do find that it's a nice matte formula to work with, and in trying to think of how to best describe this matte formula, I would say it's more like working with watercolor paints than acrylic paints, if that makes sense to anyone. These do have like almost a watercolor-esque finish to them and I actually really like that. I think it's really beautiful especially in these pastel colors but I can see how if you're used to something like this is Terra Moons down here. If you're something or used to something that's like really pigmented and there right off the bat the dandelion shades are a little bit more wispy than that. This pink shade is peony and then the green is winter green both nice colors. Peony is a pretty true like baby pink. And then winter green is almost like a sagey kind of green. It's a really interesting color. It definitely does have some blue in there too. This next one is called apple butter. And this is a pretty cool almost gray brown. It's a nice light color. So I found it good for transitions. But if you're deeper than me, it 
probably will turn up pretty ashy on you, especially with that gray undertone. Next, we've got the shade Orchid. This is a pretty good dupe for the Terra Moons shade Star Crazy, which I'm not sure if they sell anymore. So maybe one to keep in your mind if you've been looking for a pastel purple. And then lastly, we've got Honeysuckle, which is a pastel peach color. And you can definitely see like the white base on this shade. It does look very white, kind of leaning if that makes sense there are all of my dandelions shades together though overall i know some people really don't like the dandelions shimmer shades these first two i was really impressed with these middle ones are more of like oh, i could take them or leave them not the best formula i've tried but certainly not the worst the mattes again very powdery and i feel like maybe you can kind of see why i feel like they're like a watercolor kind of vibe but overall, I've liked it. I actually was talking to my friend when these came in, and I was like, oh my god, I like these so much more than I kind of expected to based on the price tag. So that's kind of where I'm falling on Dandelions overall as it currently stands. But again, more of a first impressions kind of vibe. Then the last brand that I have tried recently, like completely fresh never tried before is Kristen Lee Cosmetics. This first shade is called Azalea and it's a kind of like salmony pink with a silver sheen on top. And let me tell you, Kristen Lee Cosmetics, I've been talking with the brand owner behind the scenes a little bit because they released a new collection soon after I made a purchase. And, you know, I was commented on their page like, oh man, I'd love to buy some new ones, but I just made an order, like cry face. And she reached out and was like, if you'd like, you can combine orders. And I was like, oh, sweet. That's awesome. Cause I didn't want to pay for shipping twice. So that was really cool. She has been so nice via DMs and very helpful, very accommodating. And we love to see it. I find that they have some of the worst brand photography I have experienced uh, buying from indie shadow brands. Maybe on par with like Pretties for Your Face. And in some cases, that is a disservice to the shadows because they're way prettier in person than they look in the photography. And in some cases, it's a disservice to the customer because they look way less like sparkly than they do in the photography. So Azalea and all of the ones that I got from this like spring collection, it seems like they're maybe older, but these are a lot less sparkly in person than I thought that they would be based on the brand photos. So I'll pop that up in comparison to how it looks. And it does have a really nice sheen, but there is like no discernible sparkle in this color, whereas I figured it was gonna be pretty sparkly based on the photos. So that is like one thing I wanna note for sure about this brand, like as I continue to swatch is like, keep in mind that what you see on the website is not always what you get for better or for worse. This next shade is called Falling Leaves. And this one, again, not a ton of sparkle, definitely a little bit more visible sparkle though. It is a very fine sparkle though. This one has a pale kind of orangish tan base, and then it's got a red to gold shift, similar to that shade from Pastel Roses. This one is a lot cheaper though, and so between those two, especially with that like really dry flaky formula from Pastel Roses, I do think that this is the better option between those two. Now we've got one of the ones that I'm the most impressed with. This is the shade Bronze Beauty, and it reminds me a whole lot of the Terra Moons shades, Palladium, Rubidium, Cesium. This one is a little bit more expensive than those shades, but... I do feel like the colors are a little bit different. I think that these were like close to $8, whereas the Terra Moons ones are seven. But look at that sparkle on that one. That is crazy. I really like that one. This shade Gold Rush is one of the more inexpensive shades. I think this was like $5. 
But again, I just thought this one was going to be much sparklier than it is in practice. This is another one that if you get up real close, you can see a very fine sparkle particle and it is a nice metallic finish overall, but just not what I expected. This next shade is called Tipsy and I'm not sure if you can see, but there are some like white flecks in it. And I actually reached out to the brand owner about this when I got my package just to make sure like it wasn't anything, you know, like mold or anything. She said it's just unblended pigment particles. So she did offer me to exchange it, but I swatched it out for her and was like, is this what it normally looks like? And she was like, yes. And I was like, in that case, no need to exchange if it's, you know, harmless and it hasn't affected the shade at all. I find this is incredibly hard pressed. It is kind of hard to pick up and it's not at all what I expected it to be. It's more like a satin out of all of the shades I got. This is probably the most satin-esque. She did say she was considering discontinuing the shade, so that might be happening in the future, but I wouldn't rush to pick this one up before that because it's not my favorite. You can see it just like, even in comparison to like this shade Gold Rush, it just isn't sparkly. And again, I just thought it was going to be based on the pictures, so that's kind of a bummer. This next shade is from that same collection as Azalea, and this one's probably the least like what I expected it to look like. It almost has like a kind of olive, like grungy green base with a light green shimmer on top. It is pretty, it, again, not sparkly. I just want to emphasize these are not sparkly. Uh, it also is just less like of a pastel green than I was expecting it to be. I also, I wore this one to work one day and it creased pretty badly. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like two hours into my day, I went to the bathroom and I was like, oh my God, that is very creased. It did pat out just fine, but I was kind of surprised at how quickly it creased considering that it's such a dry and thin formula. I find that normally those last a little bit better, but this one unfortunately did not. This shade though is called Guava Twist. And if I remember right, I think this is priced around like $13. And this is a beautiful shade. And it honestly is prettier in person than I feel like it looked online. So that's why I say like some of them are a real head scratcher because some of them look better in the pictures and then some of them look worse. This one has a pretty like bright lime green base with a pink sparkle that then shifts to an orange and a gold. It is beautiful. You can kind of see that gold if I twist my arm over here, but it is just such a pretty shade. It reminds me of some of the more expensive multi-chromes from Terra Moons like Quasar, which I believe is priced at like $17. So this one is a lot cheaper and it's really nice. There's like different sized sparkle particles in this one too, which adds a lot of dimension. And I really enjoy that one. So again, just pretty inconsistent. And the same is true for this one. I think this is called Don't Kale My Vibe. Yes, this is the one that came out with the most recent collection that I added to my order. And I am so glad I did. It's insane because the pictures of this on their website make it look like it's going to be so much less beautiful than it is in person. I actually, so I did an experiment with my husband. I pulled up the pictures of this shade and this shade on the website and I asked him, I was like, which of these two shadows is sparklier? And he answered this one based on the website photos. And then I swatched them out on my arm and I was like, which one is sparklier? And he was like, oh, definitely this one. And so again, like the swatch photos online are just doing a disservice. This shadow is like this formula, which I've never seen colors like this outside of like neutrals in this type of formula. And it's beautiful. It is like a light sea foamy kind of green, like a pale green. And it is so sparkly. Do you see those sparkles? It's one of the be most beautiful eyeshadows I got out of like all of these orders. It was eight bucks again, that same price. So a little bit more expensive than the Terra Moons, but you also are getting color options that I've never seen from any other brand. And I'm so confused <laughs> by like the different formulas and things. 
Considering that this is one of the newer ones, I'm hoping that they're leaning more towards this type of formula in the future because this, seriously, one of the prettiest shades I have picked up. But, you know, I just, I, I feel like it's rolling the dice when I make an order, you know, because I don't know if it's going to look like this or like this in person. This next one is the shade Enlightenment. This is a really soft feeling shadow when you touch it. And this one is kind of a blue green with a silver kind of shift. Very similar to this shade Azalea in like how it looks. It's more of a shift than a sparkle. Although this one, when you get up close, does have a little bit more sparkle than even azalea does and then this shade is lilac you a lot this is the last one i got from that collection that had mountain magic and azalea in it and this one is pretty it's got a very sheer purple base with a blue sparkle no real shift other than that and this one is the most sparkly out of those three that i picked up from that collection but again not as sparkly as something like don't kale my vibe, which is just beyond. And then I picked up two iridescent shades from two different collections. First, we have the shade Lust, which is a more like typical kind of iridescent formula compared to other brands. It's a little lackluster. It is truly transparent though. And then it has like a purple sparkle, but the sparkle again, not like super sparkly or anything like, like a Davina soda swamp or anything like that but then this other one electric is like a satin kind of shade and i really like this it is just a blue it doesn't shift at all which is again something i like i kind of if i'm using an iridescent i like the idea of it just being whatever color i want it to be and not shifting especially if i'm using it on like the inner corner or something but look it is like truly like transparent and then it's got that really nice blue sheen on it. I find that this is like a kind of like glowing kind of highlighter and it works really well on the skin because there isn't that sparkle in it. So it's not like a super glittery highlighter if you wanna use it on your cheekbones or anything like that. I know that this was kind of a uh, more harsh first impressions and I don't mean to like dog on the brand. Like I said, the owner was extremely pleasant in DMs on Instagram. But I do find that the formula is definitely the most inconsistent out of all of the brands that I've tried recently. But like I said before, that can be inconsistent in a good way sometimes. Like these shades are so pretty. Or it can be inconsistent in a bad way where it's not quite what I expected them to be. So I would say ones that stick out to me the most are obviously Bronzed Beauty. The shade, oh my gosh, what is this one called? Uh, Guava Twist. Don't Kill My Vibe is like the ultimate winner. And then this shade Electric, it's not sparkly, but it is a really nice highlighter. Uh, some of the other ones that I feel like are good, not the best, are this shade, Autumn Leaves, Gold Rush, and then like this one, Color-wise, it's not, like not terrible, but it wore so badly, so I'm hesitant to suggest that one. But Lilac You A Lot is really speaking to me, too, so I haven't worn all of these on the eyes. I'll update you if I find that the others wear as short of a time period as Mountain Magic, but that'll be for a video down the road and I'll update on Instagram as I wear them in the future. This last little random shade down here is from LA Girl. It's one of their new shade shifter single shadows. And as soon as I saw it on the Ulta website, I was like, ooh, I'd like to try that. And it was discounted, which is fun. Something that's odd though, I it came in the single shadow packaging with the thing to pop it out. Like you see that little divot, that's like to pop it out. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. It was glued in there, and I don't think there's a magnet at the bottom, but there is a ton of glue, so I'm not going to be able to use this for anything else. And you can see I had to attach a magnet to the back because it's not a magnetized pan, which I thought was really strange considering that there's like a divot to pop the shadow out. I was like, um, okay. So there's that. 
but this is like a really like kind of oily feeling shadow. I have worn it on the eyes and it does look really pretty. Uh, and I found that it wore okay. I, I mean, I didn't test it for like a super long time, maybe like four or five hours. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But this shade is really pretty. It's got a black base and then it's got that green sparkle on top that then shifts to like a blue. I'm not sure if you can see more of that blue there. And then almost on the edges, it can look a little like purple as it blends into that black. And there's a lot of sparkle in it too. I'm not sure if you can see that. I think these are like $8.99 normally. I got it during the like summer sale that Ulta was doing. So I got it for like six bucks. And for $6, it's a pretty impactful like leaning on multi-chrome kind of shade. And I love to see that accessible at the drugstore. But if you have an extensive singles collection, I don't know if it's like worth running out and buying it, especially since it's not magnetic and it comes like glued in, which I thought was kind of a weird choice. Then the very last formula I have to shout out, I picked up some of the new Nabla shades, which I had tried Nabla single shadows in the past, but then they got rid of them all and they just came out with this new collection of single shadows. So this first shade is considered a metal. This is the shade Tuberose and I have done a reel on Instagram talking about my thoughts on these already. This is a pretty dry formula. It feels kind of soft in the pan, but then like when you apply it, it is a little bit drier feeling. Uh, it does have a nice reflective quality and you know, it's a good highlighter shade. It's a little bit deeper in the base than I was expecting, but overall pretty nice, you know, not terrible. Then we've got what they're calling a celestial shade. This is the shade Cannabis. It reminds me of some of my Glam Shop shades that I have. This one's kind of got a reddish base with a blue to purple kind of sparkle throughout it. Really pretty, nothing like super special. And I'm finding that this is starting to get a little bit of hard pan, but nothing compared to this shade, which is the multi-chrome solar notes. It's one of those shades that goes from like an orange to a gold to a little bit of a green. And then this one's got kind of a gray base. This has like already gotten hard pan on me. I also find that it's a really like slick feeling formula where tuberose is the most dry, the cannabis shade kind of sits in between the two and then solar notes is the most slick. And I feel like that is showing in the amount of hard pan in each formula as well. This has the most hard pan. This is starting to get a little bit of hard pan and this has like no hard pan. Then the last shade I got is the matte shade Oud. I find that this is very comparable to the old matte formula from Nabla. The color is pigmented, but not like too, too pigmented. I was able to use this really lightly in my crease and like build it up to my desired depth without it being like this straight off the bat. It is pretty blendable too, and it has that really nice silky feeling to it. So really enjoy the matte. I would say overall though, I wouldn't feel the need to rush out and purchase any of these because I just feel like compared to indie formulas, they aren't anything like super special. I, know, I think Nabla is also an indie brand technically, but they're like a larger indie brand sold in, you know, like retail stores. So I don't really consider them as indie as like something like Dandelions Co, for example. But one thing I do want to shout out, this is the packaging for the like new Nabla system. And it does get a ton of fingerprints on it, but it is really nice. It's very sleek. And I like that it has individual wells for the shades. Uh, it seems pretty sturdy. So this is a real win for me, <laughs> which I it's crazy when you, know, you buy it for the eyeshadows and the palette comes free, but you know, it still was a, a win. All right, I feel like I have been here for forever. I can't even imagine how long this video is going to be. So I'm not going to do dupes, comparisons, anything like that in this first impressions video, but you can expect that 
for each brand's individual video, which will come in the future once I've had more time to test everything on my eyes. So stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see how these things compare to others straight off the bat. I try to shout out like dupes off the top of my head as I was going through, but there probably are more that I just haven't figured out or, you know, talked about yet. Let me know though, have you tried any of the brands that I talked about in today's video? If you have, leave your thoughts down below or let us know which of these brands are you the most interested in trying now that you've kind of seen them all swatched out? I would say I really love my Pastel Roses order, really am interested in my Brnovich order, even though I haven't gotten to test it quite as much since it came here about a week ago. A about a week ago. Anyways, uh, NBA, I really like formula, quite different than anything else I've really tried on the market. And then Kristen or Danny Lyons Co. Surprising, not the best, but definitely not the worst. And then Kristen Lee has some real winners, but is very inconsistent. Nabla, I would say you can just skip. I hope you've enjoyed these first impressions though. And until I see you next time, I hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Bye.